in the musculoskeletal system, you guys are gonna talk a lot about hip arthroplasty and knee arthroplasty. So when we talk about hip arthroplasty, you have to consider the positioning of the patient, okay? The position of the legs have to be abducted. That means that the patient will have his or her legs out this way. Sometimes they may even place an abductor pillow. The reason why we do that is if you consider the acetabulum, okay, which is the, uh, the hip socket right there, and you consider the femoral bone, the femoral head, excuse me. So this has to be pushed inside the acetabulum. It must be kept inside the socket. So as you keep the leg relatively abducted, it digs it into the acetabulum. But if you adduct that leg, that means that this foot is going inward and that femoral head is gonna pop out. So we wanna avoid that. You have to become accustomed to your data collection. How do you know that this particular hip popped out of its socket? The leg affected is gonna be shortened and there's gonna be lateral rotation. So make sure that you guys can identify a shortened leg or one leg longer than the other, whatever, they're not even. You guys get what I'm saying? And also there's gonna be lateral rotation of that particular extremity. That lets us know that the femoral head has popped out of its socket, the muscles have pulled it up and that's why it's shorter than the other counterpart and it's usually gonna be laterally rotated. That's why you also wanna ensure that you do not do any lateral rotations for these patients, okay? When we are providing care for these patients, we have to reposition them. Keep in mind that you don't wanna place them on the operative side, that's an important consideration. And you have to keep the head of the bed lower because the idea is you do not wanna flex the hips in the immediate post-op period because if you're flexing the hips, you're also violating the principles that we just discussed and the femoral head may pop out of its acetabular socket and you'll have, again, a dislocated hip. Okay, so again, do not flex the hips for several months after surgery. It's gonna be less than six, oops, less than 60 degrees when it comes to the flexion of the hip. And then um, same thing with um, less than 90 degrees for the latter part of the recovery. So you need to understand that if we're talking about flexion of the hip and the limitations, well, the head of the bed must also be kept no greater than 30 degrees because as you lift that head of the bed more, you're flexing those hips and you wanna avoid that. So the head of the bed, head of the bed should be less than 30 degrees when it comes to raising the head because of that potential issue. Um, continuing with that same logic, if the patient is gonna opt to have a bedside commode, that bedside commode must be propped up to its highest uh, position. So when the patient actually sits down, they don't have to flex their hips too much as if like they were gonna be squatting all the way down. And so you have to lift up those, um, the, 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 the feet, the legs of the commode as high as possible to prevent that flexion of the hip, okay? So again, make sure you keep the legs uh, abducted, like you're being abducted by aliens away, and you wanna prevent adduction this way. You wanna prevent crossing of one leg over the other. All those elements violate that principle that we just discussed, and it's gonna potentiate a hip dislocation where the doctor has to go in and do the whole procedure all over again. Um, these interventions, guys, are specifically for hip arthroplasty right now. So always keep in mind that the rule is any post-op patient is also at risk for DVT potential, pulmonary stasis. This is why early ambulation is a goal for any patient who has general anesthesia, including these patients. But for the most part, for the first 24 hours or so, the patient is gonna be to some degree on bed rest. The goal is to get them out of bed as soon as possible. The doctor or the physical therapist will give you the parameters, but just understand the goal is to put them up and having some weight on that extremity as soon as possible because you wanna avoid that DVT venous uh, stasis issue. You wanna promote pulmonary motion. You wanna cough and deep breathe every hour because of those potential issues for any post-op patient. So when we're considering these patients with hip arthroplasty, consider those. Those are always your important things, ABCs, uh, potential for bleeding for the first 24 to 48 hours. But of course, we have to consider these specific types of post-op teachings for that specific patient. Okay, guys? 
Now let's talk about knee arthroplasty. In knee arthroplasty, it's not as dangerous because people that have had surgery to the hips or have had long bone fractures, they're also gonna be at risk for fatty embolism. So one thing I didn't discuss for the hip arthroplasty or for any long bone fracture is the potential for fatty emboli. So you gotta look for respiratory issues, acute respiratory issues, and petechiae and the thoracic area and the neck, which can indicate a potential fatty embolism. So continuing with um, our knee arthroplasty, In knee arthroplasty, we're, we're, we're fixing the joint, the knee joint, right? Now, that can be total knee arthroplasty, or it can be unicompartmental. Unicompartmental just means that we're only operating on one of the compartments of the knee, which reduces the time it takes for you to get better. It, it speeds up faster, and the patient can have more weight bearing um, on that particular limb because they didn't have the entire joint replaced. What you guys have to be consider, uh, considering is something called the CPM machine. Okay, this is a continuous passive motion machine. And they have this little device with a little sling on it. And the patient's leg is gonna be placed on it. And so imagine this is their knee right here. And so this machine will passively flex and extend the knee. And excuse me, that's the whole point of this particular procedure, I mean of this intervention. They're going to be placed on that as soon as the as soon as they're coming out of the um, the operating room. Once the patient stabilizes, we're going to place them on that CPM machine. So we must promote this articulation, this extension and flexion of that joint, because you want to prevent any contractures to that particular area. Okay. And patients who have knee arthroplasty, patients who have hip arthroplasty, the goal is to get them up and having at the very least partial weight bearing on the affected extremity because we want to avoid all those potential issues that are uh, related to post-op patients. Uh, pulmonary stasis, like atelectasis because of mucus plugs, and DVT formation secondary to venous stasis. So you want to get these patients up and moving as soon as possible unless the doctor gives you specific parameters not to do so.